Welcome, welcome. Today is Tuesday, October 4th, 2011, and this is the Pastel Pony Podcast. I'm your host, Vos de Sueños. So, I am readying myself to edit So Long and Thanks for All the Ponies, Chapter 7, and have just recorded Past Sins, Chapter 2, which will be up next Tuesday. I have a couple of things to talk about, but not a whole lot. The review is actually rather short this week because I've been running through some longer stuff and because I just haven't had as much free time as I'd like. I also wanted to bring up something interesting. The love and tolerance meme. I I saw a comment on one of my videos that made me think of this and have seen similar things on Facebook with a lot of the bronies groups. Um... Because there's a lot of different levels to which people take this show. Obviously, people who are recording fan fiction podcasts and painting are probably at a completely different level than the people, and, and I in no way mean better or worse than, I mean more like crazy and hyper-involved. But take the show more seriously than people who just, you know, watch the episodes and don't read any fanfics or anything. But it's that love and tolerance thing that seems to spread throughout the community and helps people bolster others' emotions and things like that. Because for me, I take it a step further, to be honest. Like, there's a lot of people who, not seriously, will change their relation, or not relation, their religion to bronyism, which, to certain extents, some people do. But, I mean, at least for me, sometimes when I get up in the morning... I honestly recite all of the elements of harmony and try to seriously live throughout those all all day. And my days are better because of it. I mean, that's kind of crazy. Now I'm okay with that because I haven't had sanity since 1982, before I was born. Um, but that being said, I just wondered what you guys think. Like, how far you take them. Do you... Do you get up in the morning and think, I'm going to be kindness today, or I'm going to make sure that I'm generous? Do you try to follow the love and tolerance meme, or is it just a show? I know a lot of, I know a lot of you who say it's just a show, but, I mean, that doesn't mean there aren't lessons to learn, right? There's a friendship lesson at the end of almost every episode, and if you try, I don't know, I guess it comes from being who I am and where I've gone through random studies of different religions and meditation techniques and stuff like that, that brings me to the point where it's just like, it doesn't matter where it comes from. As long as it seems like good advice, I can integrate it into my own system. So, all right, on to the review. The things I've been reading recently are a Drop of Moonshine, which was written by Penstroke, the pony who did past sins, and oh my, was it entertaining. It's a little not safe for work, but I am considering eventually recording that because it's very self-contained, not too long, and is just kind of an entertaining story about Luna getting Celestia drunk for the first time in a thousand years and then having random drunken antics, which any of you old enough to drink probably understand. Then, there's O Octavia, which those of you who've listened for a while know that I love Octavia and can always use more of her. It's from the perspective of a reporter who gets the very first interview ever with Octavia and starts talking to her. I believe it's meant to continue for more than a chapter and should hopefully be going somewhere even more interesting soon. I liked the first chapter a lot. I generally don't recommend things to you guys that I don't consider well-written, so that pretty much goes without saying. There was also Friendship is Surreal, which is that fic I was talking about last week that has Octavia, Lyra Bonbon, The Doctor, Ditsy, and Vinyl Scratch, which is a lot of fun, and I look forward to seeing it continue. There's O42, which is a... It has the cast of the main six, but 
it takes place in sort of a futuristic society and they're not necessarily the same characters as they were in the series. They certainly didn't live through the same experiences. Um, and there's a lot of threads that are getting tied together. It's only 3.5 chapters in, but I'm really interested to see where it goes because Pinkie Pie has apparently had her brain messed with and she's a complete genius mechanic wise. And it's, it's about them in sort of a spacefaring society. It's really cool. Then there was the only other things that I've really been reading recently were recommendations from my editor for my little enterprise, which was the sun is tired a uh, day for spike and twilight, which I read a while ago, which is amazing. If you need something heartwarming that and ditzy do in the blustery day are great things to give you a, a pickup mood wise. Um, but back to the sun is tired. It's Celestia being a tyrant, except that's how she's viewed and she knows it, but she's not that way in real life. And every time she tries to, to do something to lighten the mood, it's just perceived as this sort of extension of her, her aura and her power. And I picked it up a while back and I didn't realize that it was what I thought it was until I was a couple chapters in, but I'm catching up and it's been really cool so far. Another thing that has been really awesome is Project Horizons. And I have to tell you guys, I never played Fallout. I never really wanted to because I don't have the patience for, for RPGs anymore. And I tried reading the original Fallout story and man, Lil Pip is annoying. Can't get over how annoying Lil Pip is. But because my editor, Bronode, is also the editor for Project Horizons, I decided to give it a shot and I was rewarded almost instantly. The main character is far more interesting and mature, which is good because that's what you need for a Fallout style post apocalyptic pony world. And the, it's definitely grim, which I know that a lot of you enjoy. So, yes. Go off and read that. And I realize that this is a very short podcast, but it's also a very short week for me because I have been working so many days. Like, I don't get a weekend this week like I have in the past couple of weeks. I have one day off, I go back to work, then I have a day off, and then I'm back to work for like six days straight. So that's why normally with uh, something as short as so, so Long and Thanks for All the Ponies, I would do my best to get you guys two short stories instead of just one but that's why it's a short week for me but the next past sins is probably going to be about 45 minutes to an hour long so i will make sure that that is up by a week from today and you will have wonderful things now on to the very last thing Ooh, actually no news 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 don't know about episode three but it Hopefully, episode four is confirmed because I wanted to see a Halloween episode and I wanted to see more of Luna, but both at the same time would be phenomenal. So those of you who are looking forward to that, I am right there with you. Oh, another piece of news is that I have been considering this for a while, and some some pony brought it up recently, of adding scene tra some kind of sound for scene transitions. And... I completely agree that this needs to happen, especially now that we've got a lot longer fix happening once in a while. So it won't be in the this week's episode in So Long and Thanks for All the Ponies, but I am working on ideas of what I could possibly use for scene transitions. And if, if any pony out there has any ideas, please put it in the comments so that by the time I'm ready to edit the episode come next week, I can actually, you know, pull something and put it in. Preferably things that are, you know, not copyrighted. But I will consider using, you know, short bursts of stuff that is just in case. As long as I use credit, it's usually okay. But that kind of thing would be helpful. If any of you have an idea of what would make a good sound for scene transitions that wouldn't be annoying or repetitive. So the very last thing is that I said... Someone someone wondered if I could do Meatwad from Aqua Teen. And I just have to say that the object of the game is to find parking. No, Clam Digger! That's about as close as I can get. 
But I can also do Patrick Warburton and Alan Rickman and uh, Vin Diesel from Riddick, if you ever want to hear those. But in the meantime, this is Vos de Sueños signing off. Have an excellent evening.